Good evening, everyone. My name is Tom Curtehy, and along with my producing partner, Rob Ahrens, would like to welcome you to a conversation about Grey House. Um, a little bit of housekeeping first. I want to remind you that there's no photography or filming allowed tonight. Uh, please remember to silence your phones. And after this conversation, there's a cocktail party next door that I suspect everyone will be happy about. Um, I love thrillers and horror. Uh, and I was on a decade-long search for a play that would unsettle me, uh, capture my imagination, hijack my thoughts and take me to places that were unpredictable and, and um, surprising. A few years ago, I was emailed Grey House by Levi Holloway. Levi, you want to raise your hand? <laughs> I devoured it. I devoured it. And I thought, OK, I, I love this play. Maybe you've been looking to fall in love too long, Tom. Uh, you know, I've, I've wanted a, a play like this. I've gone all over the world looking for a thriller or a horror play. And I thought, all right, wait 48 hours, read it again. And I did, and I fell more deeply in love with the play. I also thought, this play is so good it needs a truly a, a visionary to bring it to proper life. And I believe that Joe Mantello is our greatest. And when he read it and responded to it, I don't know if I've ever said this out loud to you, but I was in shock and did a kind of happy dance in my apartment and thought, <laughs> OK, we're, this is exciting. We're, we're, we're good to go. I shared it with Rob my partner on Little Shop of Horrors, we're sort of leaning into horror, uh, <laughs> and, and Rob too fell in love. And over time, we've begun this journey, bringing this play to life. We thought about what we would do tonight um, because it's a, we don't want to reveal too much about the play. We want it to be a surprise for audiences. But I did think we should do this in a place that is rich with literary history. And what better place in New York than the, the home of the Al Algonquin Round Table? And I'm sure that there are literary ghosts in this room right now. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's a genuine honor to have you all here tonight. And we have an extraordinary company. We have Joe Mantello, Lori Metcalf, Sophia Ann Caruso, Millicent Simmons, Paul Sparks, Tatiana Maslani, our playwright Levi Holloway, and I'm also thrilled to introduce you to our director of artistic sign language, Andrew Morrill. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to hand the microphone over to Rob Ahrens, but thanks for being here tonight. So uh, Jonathan Groff is going to be moderating for us. Uh, Jonathan, as you probably know, began his career in Spring Awakening. Uh, then he went on to, a, to be in the original cast of Hamilton. Um, he most recently was in, uh, was in, um, how many other guys? Merrily, Merrily we roll along. I'm not Tom Curtie on the mic, uh, which was fully <laughs> sold out. And as Tom said, we were lucky enough to work with him on Little Shop. Uh, Jonathan's been in some little movies that you might not have heard of, like um, Frozen <laughs> or Matrix Resurrections. And um, he most recently was in M. Night Shyamalan's Horror Knock at the Cabin. So I'd like to hand this over to Jonathan. I want to thank all of you for being here. I thank our cast for participating. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Tom. I'm so honored to be here talking to this group. I haven't read this play, so I'm the perfect moderator because I'm not going <laughs> to give away anything. Uh, Levi, let's start with you. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Or we can start with Mentello if you want. Yeah, yeah start with Mentello. <laughs> give it time to warm it up. Mentello. <laughs> yes, girl. Oh, my gosh. Is this on? Yeah. I won't talk about the time that we used Nair together. Aww. I'll save that for another horror play. Uh, 
<laughs> what what drew you to this piece? You could like as as Tom said, he did a happy dance after you said yes. What was it that made you say yes to this play in particular? You could direct anything. Well, um, unlike Tom and uh, some other people in this room, I don't like horror. I'm 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 one of those people who will who will avoid going to a, a film because I don't like jump scares. I just, I think it's just me wanting to be in complete and total control. And so I would not describe this play as a, 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 a horror play or, or belonging to the horror genre. I think, it's a, I think it's a thriller and it's like my favorite kind of a thriller. It's a psychological thriller. And uh, I like Polanski, I like Rosemary's Baby, I like The Shining, I like um, Get Out. You know, those are the kinds of movies that are really, you know, sophisticated um, stories that have to do with things that concern all of us. And this, I think this play definitely falls uh, under that genre of a psychological thriller. Um, but it seems to me to do it a disservice by just uh, describing it in that way because what it is is a fucking great play. I mean, it's really, really an amazing play. And uh, we, as we dive into it every day, there's just layers and layers and layers to unearth. I think more than any of us probably even imagined when we embarked on this together. Um, and we're only in the beginning of our second week. And so, um, you know, when I first read it, I will say that I didn't, I was, I was so intrigued by it, but I was kind of baffled. And Tom arranged for um, a call with Levi, or yeah, a call, yeah. and um, and uh, and he talked about the play, and I went back and read it, and I thought, oh, this is so amazing! It was all there. I just had, I just needed him to unlock it for me, and then I just kept devouring it over and over and getting more information from him. So really, it was about uh, it was about Levi and the great writing in the play. And then how did you pull together this company, this design team? How did you put all those pieces together? I mean, uh, the design team is some people I've worked with before. Some people are, are new. Um, I think, Lori, this is our, how many plays have we done together? Six, seven. Six or seven, yeah. I, I, Lori and I were on a call recently, and I, said, I described her as she's been my uh, closest creative collaborator for probably like 10 years. And uh, there's something just about, I wish you all could have the experience of being in a rehearsal room with Lori Metcalf. <laughs> Truly, I mean, right? It's, <laughs> she sets a pace and nothing is precious and everything's precious. And um, it's all about giving the audience the ride of their lives. That's all she's interested in. And so every choice is about What's the most exciting thing we can do in this moment? And, uh, and I've worked with several of the people before. Sophia, I worked with when she was, how old were you when you were? Uh, 15. 15, she was a child. It was a two character play, or three character play. Sophia came on at the end and just mopped up and took the whole play. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul and I worked uh, on your first Broadway show, right? Uh, yeah, that was a standby for Take Me Out for yep. many, any yeah, show. Yeah. yeah. And uh, fans of everyone else. So. So, Levi. Okay, I'm ready. Back to no, you. Ready. You ready? <laughs> Go ahead. Mantello warmed you up. <laughs> uh, a Red Orchid Theater. This is mm -hmm. where the first draft of the play mm -hmm. was read, was performed in, I think, 2019. So, what was that journey from 2019 in Chicago to now being on Broadway in 2023? Uh, well, it was a harrowing one because <laughs> of the pandemic. And, uh, you know, at A Red Orchid, uh, at which I'm an ensemble member, I'm lucky enough to call myself an ensemble member there, uh, we did it in a 70-seat house. Um, and uh, it had impact, you know, real impact. And uh, I have been in conversation with the play uh, since then. I think about it all the time. It really is in my bones um, because it's such a personal story, and it, it's um, 
it's born <laughs> a lot from my nightmares. But, uh, <laughs> but I, was, I was saying to Paul today that um, I'm often grateful for my, night, my nightmares because they're so, I think nightmares are honest. Um, and in our waking life, we're surrounded by a lot of noise and uh, a lot of half lies and untruths and mitigations and negotiations. But when you're asleep, um, there's an honesty there. So I, I, I've been in conversation with the play. And um, when uh, uh, Tom and Rob became interested in it, and, uh, um, and, and then Joe, I, uh, and then because of Joe, I think, Lori, um, I just was blown away. Um, and I've just been humbled and uh, sweaty the whole time. <laughs> uh, uh, being in the room and working with these artists, and, and Joe is so open with me and uh, curious. Um, Are you changing any pieces of the play? The play is very much alive, okay. right? Through meaningful collaboration with any artist that's on stage, we can look at a moment and ask, what is this and what can it be? And I just think that a play is an offer. Uh, and um, I'm surrounded, for whatever reason, uh, by artists who make offers I, I can't think of. Um, so it, it, it's, I hope it's lifting up the work. It certainly is for me. I, I hope it is for them, too. Did it, did, it, did it initially come to you in a dream, This this the impulse for this play? Did it come out of a dream that you had? Or was there an event that happened in your life that you thought I need to make a play about this? Uh, well, yeah, I, I don't want to darken the room, but... Um, uh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of it's dream-driven, for sure. Uh, but in 2016, I lost my twin. Uh, in 2020, I lost my dad. Um, and I've been in conversation with that grief, and I've, I've asked myself, well, where do I put it? Where does it go? Um, and I wanted to write about a house that uh, holds it. Um, but not just that. Uh, where does that love go, right? Um, and, and where do you put the love, right? And I was falling in love with my now wife at the time I was writing it, and I was kind of healing through that relationship. So a lot of it's about kind of letting go um, of what I thought I had to hold on to. Um, uh, so it, it sounds like heavy shit, and, and I guess it is. Uh, <laughs> but... Um, I'm really interested in, in the honesty of that and the levity of it, right? Laughing through that stuff because it just feels good. That just gave me chills and that there wasn't even a jump scare, which I feel like <laughs> is maybe the energy of the play that you're talking about, perhaps. Uh, Lori. Yeah. First of all, I'm obsessed with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we all, we all are, obviously. Uh, you're a Mantello repeat offender yeah. <laughs> six or seven times. Yeah. What keeps you coming back? I, I, I'm constantly on the prowl for something that will get me into, back into the room with Joe, which is my favorite place to be in the world is uh, a rehearsal room uh, with Joe, if I can. And um, I keep coming back because I think I do my best work with him, and I want to keep getting better. That's the short answer. Um, and also, I love the way that he does cast shows, and so, and this one in particular, it's the the group is st we're starting to congeal. You know, this is a, a play that turns out I think ha is is uh, very precise. I wouldn't have thought of that uh, before we got into the rehearsal room, and so as it's very much an ensemble, and it's very much um, we're very much collaborating which is also a favorite way that I like to work. And so um, we're day seven of rehearsal, and so we're, 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 we're starting to find, we're, 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 we're fuzzy around the edges, mm -hmm. and I can sense it starting to crystallize. Very exciting. Does everybody, is everybody off book? Or is everybody like holding their pages on day seven? What's the status? Or it's a new play, so are there changes? Like what is the... Do you come in memorized or not? What's your process, Lori? Well, I try to come in memorized, and on this one, I thought I was. <laughs> but it turns out, and we've all remarked uh, uh, about this in, the, in rehearsal, 
the dialogue is, since it's very much an ensemble, it ping pongs back and forth very quickly. And so even though I know my lines, I don't know my cues. <laughs> right? And it's making me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> And what was it about this role? I know you can't say exactly what, you know, literally, energetically, what was it perhaps about this role that, you've, that, that pulled you? Well, when Joe called and said, I have found a play called Grey House, and I thought, oh, I'm gonna be doing a play called Grey House, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, and he told me a little bit of uh, what it was about, and I thought, oh, that sounds eerie, that sounds unsettling, I like, I like, and so I, started reading it, and I was delighted with the amount of humor in it. it, it, it it's, it's like the cherry on top that I didn't expect, and I think we're finding more and more, but the stuff that's already built in on the page, I love. Okay. Tatiana and Paul. Yes. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Hi back there. So I know that we can know that you play a couple in a house. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, do you feel like you're, are you perhaps the conduit for the audience, A, and how does yes. that make you feel? Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> you're getting it right. And I want to uh -huh. know, like, did you, like, to build this relationship, I know it's been seven days of rehearsal, but if, did you guys meet before? Did you guys talk about this? Like, how do you create, did you know each other before this play? How are you creating your chemistry no. for the show? Not at all. Um, no. To total strangers. Total strangers. <laughs> <laughs> Married, total strangers. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been a, uh, I mean, f for me, there were just thousands of questions when I read this play. And it continues to open up in, in a way that I think the audience will also experience as like, there's just so many possibilities. And I think we've been working on finding what this concrete thing is within this world of questions. Yeah, I think, I think initially I really underestimated just how, uh, how densely written this script was. I think that on the surface, when you just go through it the first time, you go, oh, there's something about this. This is really good. I, I, this is weird and good. Like, I don't know what it is. But as we've gotten into the room, all the ideas I had about what it might be have been, have been cha changed into, oh, no, this is a very, very deep story uh, that uh, the relationships are very deep. They have their, and it's all there. We're not... You know, it, like Levi has has uh, left clues throughout it. So this this process has really been about kind of decoding like what he's written and um, trying to like solve this uh, beautiful puzzle of uh, like who we are. So uh, that's been good. But also, she's really good. <laughs> he's really so good. So it's really easy, you know, because she's really oh, they're all. Amazing. Yeah, it's Everybody's really so good. You know, it's delicious. <laughs> what were we going to say? Were we gonna say something? No, it's just been a, a joyful rehearsal that, um, yeah, lots of openness from every angle and lots of curiosity and, um, I don't know, anybody who, I, who has heard that I'm doing this play and wants to read it, I'm like, no. You can't. You have to experience it. And every day it feels like we're experiencing some new part of it, some new key, some, yeah. So I think, I think it's just going to be a joy for the audience. Hi, Sophia. Hi. How's it going? It's going great. Um, I want to know, know what drew you to this, to this show. I'm also curious because it's feeling like in your, in your work, you're going for like genre specific pieces from your TV show to Beetlejuice. Is this something that you're being intentional about? Are these things coming to you because it did it all start with Beetlejuice and this is now what you're finding coming across your desk or what, is there a through line there or not? And what is it that drew you to this show? I think what I look for in characters is constantly shifting. I don't think I'm always looking for one specific thing in a role. 
if it sparks my imagination, it does. If it doesn't, you know, it doesn't. Um, I don't think it started with Beetlejuice. I worked with Joe before that, really dark play. Before that, I did a play called The Nether. All these other things, ever since I was young, I sort of was drawn to, I guess, darker material, things that um, made me think, psychological thrillers, um, things that provoke conversations, and, and yes, curiosity. Um, so I think that, yeah, it's always shifting on what I want. But yes, also genre things, just very specific. I think Marlowe's also very specific. Yeah. How are you feeling on day seven of rehearsal? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm thrilled and curious every day. I'm looking for something new in the character every day and learning from watching. Oh, Lori, yes, Lori in a rehearsal room. I just am blown away watching you. And, and all of you. It's so cool to just so slowly watch these um, characters develop and yeah, it's really, I'm having a great time. That's so good to hear. Usually day seven is like, I'm stressed. I don't know that what too. I'm doing. I'm like, why did I do this? But Humbled and sweaty. Yeah, it sounds so joyful. This is, this is amazing. Hi, Millie. Hi. Uh, congratulations. This is your Broadway debut, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is. Um, I'm nervous. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to expect, but I'm very excited to be with everyone there. Is Broadway something that you dreamt about? Has it been a goal for you in your career as an actress? Uh, absolutely. I was doing you know, theater growing up, but I never really dreamt that I would be on an actual Broadway stage with actors like this. Um, and you know, I've been working in movies, and I never knew that I wanted to be on a Broadway stage. But I realized I miss theater. I miss doing this kind of work of coming together. So when I got the email from Joe, I was like, "Oh yes!" I didn't even read. The, I didn't even read the shit. I just went, "Oh yes." <laughs> I, I don't care. It's, a, it's just a yes. Just give me the script. I'm on the stage. Let's go. Um, and then when I found out who Joe was, I didn't even really know who Joe was. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is bigger than I even knew. Um, but, you know, meeting everyone it has been really, everyone's been so welcoming. It's been wonderful. It's been tough as well. Com I mean, it's very complex. It's very honest. Um, and it's been, and working with everyone has just made it so worthwhile. I just very heartfelt. I loved you in a quiet place. And <laughs> and Thank I you. guess the same as Sophia, like is is this genre, this like dark, mysterious, psychological material something that you seek out? Is it something you feel that you're drawn to or do you feel like it's it's drawn to you or you're drawn to it or maybe both? I think that uh, I'm warming up to it actually. I really like I like the, the kinds of things that make you think, right? I mean, not just entertainment. Um, that, and where there's a physical impulse, you know, when you're in the theater, I can watch people in an audience and see their reactions to cinema. And what's so different about in sta on stage, I'm going to have the better view. I get to see the audience <laughs> reacting as it unfolds. I think that's going to be the best uh, position to be in. It's a really a new experience for me. A, very, a total shift of perspective uh, to see an audience responding to your work. And it's done in one take, right? And then it's over. So that's very exciting for me. Uh, we'll see what happens, right? Who is going to be at your first, the first preview of this play, your Broadway debut on stage? Who is going to be in the audience? My mom, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> she's always with me. Uh, she, you know, from day one, she's been my, she's had my back. I couldn't make it without her, and my family as well. They're very supportive. They've, you know, sacrificed a lot for me, and so I'm so grateful to all of them. I'm so happy for you. I can't wait to see you make your Broadway debut. Oh, thank you. Uh, and by the way, my sister is a big fan of yours. <laughs> 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 So she actually wrote you a letter that she wants me to give to you after. I know. It's, a, it's an awe. It is a big, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, she's a little jealous that I'm here with you tonight. We'll have to take a picture and send it to her. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Oh, she'll, be, she'll do her happy dance then. <laughs> oh, my God. Hi, Andrew. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Groovy. 
Okay, good. Yeah, everybody <laughs> seems to be grooving, which is, I feel like, a really good sign for the seventh day. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, especially on day seven. We're doing great. Can you explain to us your role as the DASL uh, on this show? And, uh, well, yeah, start by that, by doing that, please. Sure, absolutely. So DASL stands for Director of Artistic Sign Language. It's a specific <coughs> position on the creative side of the team. It's kind of making its way to Broadway, but it's been around in our community for a long time and involves a couple of pieces to it. The first is being a part of the creative team. So I collaborate with Joe, I collaborate with Levi and our choreographer, Camille, and our music director, Orr, as well. And I'm also responsible for the portrayal of the deaf experience on stage. So I'm injecting the deaf experiences into the world of the play, and I'm doing some cultural mediation there. Then I also work on the translation process, too. So Levi has written a play in English, and I create artistic translations in American Sign Language that support Levi's play and making sure that it's done in an authentic way. The second aspect to my work is that I'm giving free ASL classes to hearing people on the show, <laughs> <laughs> tutoring them in American Sign Language. So that's basically what a dazzle does. Nice. And this is a period piece, correct? Yes. And so is there, is there certain language that is altered in, the, in that translation because of it being a period piece? Yeah, I could talk all night <laughs> about this. It's quite complicated, but to sum it up, ASL, like all spoken languages, evolves over time. So in the 70s, they signed very different than how deaf, the deaf community in 2023 signs. And Bernie, which is the character that Millie plays, we have to really think about how Bernie would sign in the 1970s. So I've actually chatted with some older deaf people and taken some inspiration from then and watched videos from that time period as well. And that kind of creates the foundation for how Bernie signs in the play. I try my best. Let me just <laughs> clarify. Uh, I'm glad he's happy so far. <laughs> What's your favorite thing that you've seen from the past that's been like crazy or interesting that you've watched from the 70s? Oh, what interests me is, so in the 70s, our ASL actually followed English word order, and I'm gonna give you a quick example right here. So the question, who are you? So, and how we would sign it today is, who are you? Just like this. In the 70s, we would follow English word order, so we would have three signs, who are you? So it's just a slight difference maybe to your eye, but there is some nuance there. And I don't think many hearing audience members will catch the difference, but when we have deaf audience members, they're definitely gonna recognize the work that went into creating these translations. That's so cool, thank you for sharing that. Okay, I mean, I think that, that's, that's, our, that's our cue. Does anybody, does anybody from this group, day seven, does anybody wanna wrap it up? Do you have a final mission statement? Do you have anything <laughs> that you haven't said that you wanna share about this play that you want people to know before they come into the theater. Levi, I nominate you to send us out. <laughs> That's very kind. It's <laughs> 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 your Broadway debut. <laughs> um, it, it, it's uh, quite a thing um, to be surrounded by all of these artists and um, the amount of gratitude that I feel is, is hard to measure, uh, and I don't have words for that. I struggle with the idea of genre. Um, I think that good stories, um, they, the characters in good stories must change, right? And in horror, in thrillers, they usually have to change in order to survive. Um, and that sort of open nerve honesty is such a vulnerable place to traffic in rehearsal um, and certainly on stage when we get there. Um, but the amount of care that everyone uh, takes of each other and, and uh, led by Joe, everyone just is having such a good time. I'm the kind of person that starts a vacation and I'm like, well, it's over. <laughs> um, you know, like, as soon as I land, I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, this has been great. Um, so I'll look at the clock and it'll be like 
an hour and a half before rehearsal's over, and I go, well, shit. <laughs> it's over. I was just starting to talk to it. So I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being here. See you next door for a drink. Thank you. Lovely job. Lovely.